Not sure if you're doing a fantastic job. Well, here's 10 signs that you might be an amazing dad. Like me or someone that struggles with the mental health. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass. But you are not alone. As you'll see from this podcast. Hi there, my name's James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. I set up this podcast because I really want to try and support parents, specifically dads, and I suppose even more specifically, dads who, like me, might struggle with their mental health. If that sounds like something you'd like to support, please do me a massive favour by hitting subscribe. So I'm doing 41 seconds, not sure how much value you've delivered so far. And super cheeky as this is, because we're not even a minute in 41 seconds, and I'm already asking you for stuff. But if you really want to be a super epic, lovely, supportive type person, and wouldn't mind watching this all the way to the end, it might help to float me from the depths of the YouTube ocean so that I can hopefully support dads who are struggling with their mental health. So sign number one that you might be an amazing dad, you make time for your kids. None of us have any time. The cost of living crisis has not helped that. Both me and my wife work full time, and at the end of the day, quite often, all we want to do is just melt onto the sofa, eat some food, get the kids to bed, and get to bed yourself. But if you're that dad who's dragging himself up to read that story, to play a game of FIFA, to kick a football around, well, there's a very strong chance you're absolutely smashing it, especially if you really don't feel like it because you're tired. And quality time is not just about helping them with their homework. It's usually doing stuff you don't really want to do. Do I really want to get laughed at losing 20 now when I'm playing FIFA with my son? No. Although I have to say, hearing his squeals of delight at me running into the crowd or accidentally kicking the ball into my own goal is well worth it. Sign number two, you listen to them. I was lucky enough to have an amazing guest on my podcast a few months back who's a clinical social worker. And we were talking about relationships with your children and what you can do when your children are young to increase the chances that you'll have good relationships with them when they're teenagers and then adults. And he said, if you want your teenage and adult children to trust you and talk to you about the big stuff in their lives, then you have to have the patience to listen to them when they tell you the little stuff. One of the most challenging things as a parent is trying to field all the seemingly impossible to answer questions that your children have. I have to really bite my tongue not to get completely frustrated or just say, I don't know. Unfortunately for my six-year-old son, we still haven't got to the bottom of whether or not 10 seagulls would be strong enough to lift a horse, or whether or not the wind is a man or a woman, or whether or not it's actually possible to live on quavers. But we're getting there. And I do my best to breathe in and just answer the questions. Because apparently the worst noise there is that when the worm turns and suddenly you're desperate to know how your kid's day was and they're not really interested in talking to you. Sign number three, your patience and your understanding. I think patience is probably the one quality that will get you more success as a parent than any other. Waiting for people to have their shoes on, waiting for people to get their book bags, Doing your best not to cry when your son pours cocoa pop juice down his white t-shirt for the fourth time in as many minutes. Patience truly is a virtue. And if you take the time to be patient with your children, especially when they're being utterly obnoxious and unreasonable, which is a common occurrence at the end of a long school day, then you're a really good dad. And it's not just relationships with your children, it's relationships with any member of your family. If you can be patient and understanding, if you can be the bigger person, if you can have the strength of character to take a deep breath and count to 10, not lose your rag, not get cross, not be condescending, all of these things are not easy, then you are an awesome dad, fact. Sign number four, you set a good example. Your children will not clean their teeth if you don't clean your teeth. Your children will not accept not having devices at the kitchen table if you have your device at the kitchen table. If you don't treat people with respect, they won't treat people with respect. Children are like sponges. They are absorbing and observing and watching your every move. And quite often, if my children get frustrated and turn the air blue with a profanity that I've certainly said myself, I've really only got myself to blame. It's really difficult, especially at the moment when we're living in a cost of living crisis, to be calm, patient 
and set the standard. But we have to. That's our job as dads. We are probably one of, if not the main breadwinner in the family. We are definitely one of the two people setting the example for good behavior, good manners, and just generally doing your best in life. It's not easy, but it's worthwhile, and doing it is only gonna make your life better. This is a given, but there are times when you're tired or you're trying to work and your children are crawling all over you. They wanna cuddle, they want your attention, and you're engrossed in something else. You've literally just sat down, you're literally in the middle of something. But unless it is literally life and death, give them your attention. If what they want is positive, if they want a cuddle or they want to talk to you or they wanna play a game, that five, 10 minute break in whatever you're doing might actually really help you out. And like anything, the first two minutes are probably a bit of a challenge, but once you're into doing whatever it is they want you to do, you'll probably be like, this is so much fun. This is why I'm a parent. Sign number six, you might be an amazing dad. You encourage their interests. My son is obsessed with football. And when he asks me about 50 times a day whether or not I think he can be a professional footballer, I have to work really hard to bite my tongue and not let my cynical 47 year old rational mind jump in and go, well, actually, probably you probably should have been sent to an academy age six. And the fact that you're nine probably means it might be unlikely. There'll be plenty of people in the world to pour cold water on your kids' dreams. It can't be you. And my fairly probably cop-out response is, do you think you can be a footballer? And when he nervously says yes, and I say, well, then I think you can, because you can do whatever you want. You don't have to specifically go into whether or not that will be a footballer playing for a premiership club, or maybe a five-a-side football twice a week with your mates after work. There's a really famous line that George Clooney says in the film Up in the Air, that film about people that go around America having to sack people. And he asks someone he's about to sack, why do children love sportsmen? The guy doesn't know, and George Clooney says, because they didn't give up on their dreams. And that's quite true. Why do we love sportsmen? Why as adults do we still respect and revere sportsmen and women? Because they had a dream, and irrespective of how difficult it was, they didn't give up on it. Sign number seven, you're teaching them life skills. Yes, there are things they'll learn at school, but there's an awful lot that you can teach your children. Practical skills like how to change a bike tire, how to be polite and act appropriately in public, how to introduce yourself. We have an obligation to do what we can to make sure that our children are set up for life so that when they're adults, they know how to introduce themselves. They know how to carry themselves in public. They know how to be polite. They know what appropriate table manners are. I'm pretty sure that it will haunt me if when they're adults, I see really bad behavior of things that actually I could quite easily have taught my kids when I had the opportunity. And sign number eight, you might be an awesome dad. You admit when you're wrong. This is a biggie. And this is more about the ongoing battle with your ego than anything else. As I've mentioned previous times in lots of episodes over the past decade, I started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu two weeks after my 40th birthday in 2016. And as well as getting fitter, becoming more confident, learning some self-defense, learning how to be more present, the most valuable thing I imagine Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has done for me, it's helped me to develop a much more healthy relationship with my ego. Whether you make a mistake and get something wrong or whether you fail at something, having the courage to admit it, apologize if needs be, and get on with it shows character. And this is character that your children will copy. I often get cross and shout at the kids or tell them off for something that wasn't really their fault. I always try and apologize because it's really important that children see that adults are not perfect and they're gonna make mistakes. And that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you own the mistakes and clean up your mess. I think there's a danger when you get into your 30s, 40s and 50s to think, well, I know it all now, there's nothing else to learn. And I think it's really good for your ego if you learn a skill or a hobby that's really difficult, learn an instrument, learn a martial art, learn to do something that's really challenging where you're gonna fail and you're gonna get lots of stuff wrong. If you can train yourself to think, well, it's not that like I got it wrong, I just found a way that I don't wanna do it again. It takes the fear away from failure. And if there's no fear of failure and you try more stuff and your kids see you trying more stuff and your kids see, that's totally one of those guys that always just gives it a go. Does his best, sometimes makes a hash of it, but he gives it a go. That's a really good skill to model for them. And the ninth sign, you might be an awesome dad. You create a safe environment. If you want your children to thrive, you need to create a safe environment for them to live. The home has to be a safe, comforting, loving place 
where they feel utterly loved and supported. If your kids are quiet and you're a bit worried about them, even if they get a bit cross because you're asking them several times, have the courage to keep asking and probing if you're worried. School is still probably more so as hostile and potentially dangerous and scary place for a young person to be. But I think if you can make your home a safe, loving, accepting environment, in respect of what happens to them outside of that environment, they'll learn resilience and they'll thrive. I remember growing up having lots and lots of major heart-to-hearts with my parents around the kitchen table, and those conversations got me through all sorts of things. Relationship breakups, losses of jobs, all manner of stress was discussed and handled at the kitchen table. And, and I was lucky enough to grow up in a environment where I felt actually it was safe to be honest here. It was safe to express my feeling. It was safe to get upset. I wasn't gonna be judged. I wasn't gonna be marked down. My parents are people I could talk to about anything irrespective of what situation I've got myself in. You need to earn their trust for that to happen. And the tenth and final sign that you might well be an awesome dad, you have fun with them. Don't take life too seriously. There's enough seriousness in life that's gonna to happen to them naturally. My children are certainly out of that age now where dad being a bit of a wally is super cringy. But I secretly think they like it. When I dance around the kitchen like a wally, or hide behind the kitchen door and jump out to scare their mum. I know there's a part of them that finds it quite amusing. And serious stuff's gonna happen to them in life. There needs to be some fun. Life needs to be an enjoyable experience. If you're super serious, they're gonna be so scared to take any risks. They're gonna go through life thinking, I can't have any fun, I can't be silly, I can't mess around. There's a time to be serious and hardworking and there's a time not to be. And like all these other examples, you have to model that for them. My children still talk about the time, a Halloween about 10 years ago, when I dressed up as a crow. None of us know what's around the corner. And impossible as it may seem sometimes, especially at the moment when no one's got any money and we're all stressed, I have to remind myself that my three children have a fairly short childhood. And when they're growing up, they don't want to talk to me, don't want to mess around in the garden, that's gone forever. So just to clarify, the 10 signs that you are probably an awesome parent. Number one, you make time for them. It's like anything, it's like going for a run. So they're going to jiu-jitsu. The first two minutes of whatever activities they want to do will be a challenge, but then you'll be so pleased you did it. Sign number two, you listen to them. If you want your children to trust you with the big stuff in their lives when they're adults, when well, you need to listen to the small stuff now when they're children. And if anyone has an answer about whether or not 10 seagulls would be strong enough to lift up a horse, can you please let me know in the comments? Sign number three, you're patient and understanding. Patience is a virtue that quite often I don't possess, but probably like you, I'm doing my best to work on that. Sign number four, you set a good example. If you want them to brush their teeth, you have to brush your teeth. If you want them to turn off devices when you're having a nice family meal, you have to set that example. Sign number five, you show them love and affection. Irrespective of how grown up they're trying to be at school, I quietly as possible so not to embarrass them, Remind my kids that I love them and I'm really proud of them because I can remember life as a nine-year-old not being that easy. Everyone needs to know that someone loves and appreciates them and is proud of them. Sign number six, you encourage their interests. The world will be full of people who will be ready to pour cold water on their dreams and hopes. It can't be you. Sign number seven, you teach them life skills. Yes, school will teach them a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff about how to appropriately act and behave in the world that they need to learn from you. I always tell my kids, even when they say, this is boring, you've told me this before, that good manners and being positive and friendly will get them opportunities in life that those people who aren't polite and friendly don't get. Sign number eight, you admit when you're wrong. We all get it wrong. We're human beings. We're doing our best, but that involves getting it wrong. That's just working on the relationship where you have your ego. And as I said, if you want help with that, Start learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. When you mess it up, have the strength of character to admit you were wrong. I found that my children are unbelievably forgiving and understanding. Sign number nine, you create a safe environment. Your home has to be somewhere where they feel safe, loved, and accepted. That's on us as parents. And the last sign, sign number 10, and quite arguably maybe the most important one, have fun with them. Don't take life too seriously. No one is too old to mess around and do a silly dance in the kitchen. No one is too old to jump out from behind a sofa and try and scare their wife. I really hope you got something for this podcast. 
And if, like me, you're a dad who struggles with OCD or your mental health in some other capacity, and you might be interested in potentially being a guest on my podcast, please contact me via the link in the description. And if you want to help me try and get the word out and support other dads who might be struggling with mental health, a like, a share, and a subscribe makes an enormous difference. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take good care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, a 42-week guide to pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.